بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹس ٹوڈے وی آر گوئنگ ٹو اسٹارٹ ود آر لیکچر نمبر سیونٹین اینڈ وی ہیو بین ڈسکسنگ دی ٹریجڈی آف پرنس ہیملٹ اینڈ ارلیئر آن وی ور ٹاکنگ اباؤٹ ہاؤ ہیملٹ تھنگس آف ہیم سیلف ایز سم بڈی ہو ہیز بین رانگڈ اینڈ دیر از دیر آر تھنگس وچ آر ناٹ رائٹ ان دی اسٹیٹ آف ڈین مارک and uh, we started when we uh, saw that the ghost of king hamlet is um, haunting the palace and people have seen uh, the ghost horatio is one of the persons who has uh, who witnesses it and then later on he says that i must discuss this with my uh, with my prince hamlet so that he is able to decide maybe the ghost will talk to him because uh, there are things which uh, he is not sure of and he says that I don't know whether um, whether this ghost will talk to anyone else or not because uh, people they thought that Horatio was uh, a scholar and maybe the ghost will talk but again uh, Horatio sees the ghost but it does not talk to him so um and then uh, we moved on to the uh, the palace in which uh, uh, king claudius has uh, taken uh, charge of the throne and he has married uh, gertrude uh, hamlet's mother and uh, hamlet is not of course uh, happy with the situation because uh, he feels that uh, his mother has married in a haste too quickly she has uh, gone into a nuptial bond with somebody else so how can she forget the love and the care of a husband uh, who did not even uh, let her you know feel the uh, strong winds so he protected her in uh, such a great manner and of course uh, hamlet was a witness to uh, king hamlet and gertrude's uh, love and affection for each other so uh, he says that how can she forget it so quickly and i hope you remember ki humne discuss kiya tha ki she has changed her shoes very quickly so um, he wants to go away uh, to wittenberg but um, uh, king uh, claudius and uh, gertrude both of them insist that hamlet should stay with them so now here there could be two situations about it one could be that uh, you know they are concerned about hamlet's uh, health uh, because he is uh, wearing black and he is in a mourning and he is uh, very upset about uh, you know um, the whole situation and he's very depressed so uh, one thing could be that they are concerned the gertrude of course would be concerned for her son and the other thing is that um, perhaps uh, you know Uh, they want to keep an eye on him because they have been uh, playing uh, foul and um, they have managed to get rid of king hamlet and uh, taken over the throne so um, there are two aspects about it uh, please remember uh, ke jab aap uh, shakespeare padhte hain to shakespeare ne koi um, bahut uh, زیادہ ایکسپلینیشنس اپنی باتوں کی نہیں دی ہے یہ ہماری انٹرپریٹیشنس ہیں اور کرٹکس کے ویوز ہیں جو کہ اس کے میننگس اس کے ورڈس کو اتنی ڈائمینشنس دیتے ہیں اور اتنی ڈفرنٹ میننگس اس میں سے نکلتی ہیں سو ریڈ اور شیکسپیئر کو پڑھنے کا چام بھی یہی ہے کہ آپ اس کو کس طرح سے پڑھتے ہیں کس طرح سے اس کے ساتھ آپ اپنے آپ کو آئیڈینٹیفائی کرتے ہیں so um a very um you know thought provoking uh, tragedies these are or in mein aapko bada um, interest bhi develop hota hai aap situations ko bhi samajhte hain circumstances bhi aapke um, ird gird jo hote hain wo aap unko dekhte hain aapka apna concern show karte hain so all these things are uh, very very um, you know uh, unique and very effectively done سو یہاں پہ اب میں آپ سے یہی ریکویسٹ کروں گی کہ شیکسپیئر اگر خود موجود ہوتے 
तो शायद वो अपनी एक्सप्लेनेशन खुद दे सकते बट सिंस वी आर यू नो इंटरप्रेटिंग डिफरेंटली सो वी आर ओपन टू डिस्कशन और ये नहीं है कि um, एक, एक ही बात किंग uh, uh, इसने हेमलेट uh, ने कह दी है तो वही बात जो है उसका सिर्फ वही मीनिंग निकलता है नो इट्स नॉट दैट वे हर डायलॉग के डिफरेंट मीनिंग्स हैं सो बी वेरी वेरी क्रिटिकल अबाउट इट थिंक अबाउट द अदर डायमेंशन डेट यू मे हैव इन योर माइंड इवन आई वुड से कि मेरी एक्सप्लेनेशन काफ़ी नहीं हैं हेमलेट को पढ़ने के लिए किंग लेयर को पढ़ने के लिए शेक्सपियर को पढ़ने के लिए आपको बहुत इमेजिनेटिव बहुत प्रो एक्टिव और बहुत ऑब्जर्वेंट होना पड़ेगा एंड मेरा तो यही ख्याल है कि हर सोसाइटी में इस तरह के एलिमेंट्स मौजूद हैं जिनको शेक्सपियर ने पोर्ट्रे किया है सो वी सी सर्टन दीज काइंड ऑफ पीपल एंड वी आर कंसर्न विद दैम दे आर पार्ट ऑफ आर लाइव एंड दिस इज हाउ यू नो द वर्ल्ड गोज ऑन सो ये सारी जो बातें हैं ये सब आपके सामने हैं सो कमिंग टू हिज लॉन्ग लॉन्ग स्पीच दैट शी हैज मैरिड क्लॉडियस विद इन अ मंथ हाउ कैन शी डू दिस सो मोस्ट विकेट स्पीड टू पोस्ट विद सच डेक्सटेरिटी टू इंसेस्टुअस शीट्स दीज आर इम्पॉर्टेंट लाइन्स इनको आपने कोट करना है जब भी आप हेमलेट के कैरेक्टर स्केच करेंगे कैरेक्टर डिस्कशन करेंगे तो और यहाँ पे साथ साथ हमने किंग लेयर के साथ भी इसका कंपैरिजन शुरू किया एंड वी डिस्कस दैट हेमलेट इज ऑसोलेटिंग टू मच बिटवीन व्हाट इज टू बी डन एंड व्हाट इज नॉट टू बी डन वेर एज किंग लेयर टुक एक्शन वेरी वेरी क्विकली सो ये डिफरेंस है बड़ा इनके दोनों के कैरेक्टर में और वही चीज़ इनको बहुत यूनिक और बहुत अमेजिंग uh, और बहुत अंडरस्टैंडेबल बनाती है सो ही सेज बट ब्रेक माई हार्ट फॉर आई मस्ट होल्ड माई टंग होल्ड माई टंग यहाँ पे uh, इस चीज़ को हमने पहले भी डिस्कस किया कि ही सेज दैट आई मस्ट होल्ड माई टंग बिकॉज ही थिंक्स दैट टाइम इज नॉट राइट मे बी Uh, that he should wait for the right time and then he will strike or uh, he is afraid for his own life he is confused uh, he is uh, not a person who makes up his, his mind very very quickly so um, here are these uh, aspects of his um, dialogue which we must uh, also uh, keep in mind so uh, then again um, enter horatio Marcellus and Bernardo Horatio is a good friend of um, Hamlet and we discussed that um, Laertes Polonius Horatio and Ophelia who's going to be um, there in the play later on these people are very genuine people these are they are very concerned for Hamlet and uh, they really care for him as a very dear dear friend so um again the comparison of king lear with uh, cordelia and kent who were very uh, very much sincere with the king so you see these lines uh, are uh, you know together and you have to uh, think about uh, two consecutive plays at the same time so uh, see your comparison apne horizon ko zara wide kijiye और अपने माइंड को चैनलाइज करें सो यू विल बी एबल टू गेट द रियल ग्रिप द रियल एक्साइटमेंट एंड द रियल यू नो यूनिकनेस ऑफ शेक्सपियर प्लेस सो हेल टू योर लॉर्डशिप देन हेमलेट कम्स इन एंड ही सेज आई एम ग्लैड टू सी यू वेल हो रेशियो और आई डू फॉर गेट माई सेल्फ सो यू नो दिस इज द पॉइंट where uh, hamlet is also concerned with what horatio is going to say to him so um, again things are going on in a very positive direction in a very uh, amazing way in a very effective way and uh, you know um, when you're concerned about uh, people when you're concerned about your uh, loved ones your dear ones you are uh, and when they are in trouble you always feel unhappy and you always feel depressed horatio the same my lord 
and your poor servant ever. So here he is saying that, you know, I am your poor servant. So again, we come to know, we discuss that even Horatio does not like this kind of an attitude from these people. And he is also smelling something uh, which is gone wrong. He has actually seen um, the ghost of uh, King Hamlet and uh, he will now uh, confide in Hamlet that you must talk to your father and uh, see uh, what is wrong. So, Hamlet, Sir, my good friend, I'll change that name with you. And what make you from Wittenberg, Horatio? Marcellus. So he says that I wish that I was not Hamlet and I was not suffering in such a great manner as to lose my father and of course to lose my mother as well because her allegiance, her love and care is now divided and is now there with um, King Claudius. So he is uh, not happy over the whole situation. Merciless, good my lord, Hamlet, I'm very glad to see you. Good evening, sir. But what in faith make you from Wittenberg? He says, how come you have come away from Wittenberg? And what is the condition? What is the situation like? Horatio, a truant disposition, good my lord. He says that, you know, um, things are not quite okay and I am not very solidly standing onto the grounds. So this is what he is saying. Hamlet, I would not hear your enemy say so, nor shall you do mine ear that violence, to make a truster of your own report against yourself. I know you are no truant, but what is your affair in Elsinore? We'll teach you to drink deep ere you depart. So again, he says that, uh, you know, I will, uh, I don't know what has brought you here. And uh, you are the one who is going to uh, really, really uh, tell me what is actually going on. And he says, how uh, have you come to Eleanor? Uh, we'll teach you to drink deep ere you depart. It means that you will be able to sense things more clearly before you go away. Horatio, my lord, I came to see your father's funeral. So they've all uh, collected at the funeral of uh, King Hamlet, uh, his death, and uh, that is how they are now sharing their ideas and sharing their views about what things are not uh, in their, uh, you know, uh, in their favor. Hamlet. I pray thee do not mock me, fellow student. I think it was to see my mother's wedding. So here. Hamlet is definitely being very, very sarcastic. He says it's not a funeral, but a wedding has taken place. So the significance of funeral and wedding, so two opposites together. That makes a very, very effective, very, very um, violent kind of a tragedy. So he's being very sarcastic. Horatio. Indeed, my lord, it followed hard upon. Here. So he says that, you know, um, it is very uh, hard on us to see. Again, Horatio is a very close friend of Hamlet. And he says that it is very hard on us to see that, uh, you know, uh, Queen uh, Gertrude has married so, so quickly and um, even, uh, you know, the grave of uh, King Hamlet is not cold as yet. It is warm. 
So um, here uh, we feel that Hamlet and Horatio are of the same view that uh, this has not come uh, as a favor and uh, it, we feel that there is something absolutely wrong and it follows hard on us. It is very hard to realize that um, Queen Gertrude has married Claudius so quickly. So um, again over here we discuss that uh, the rightful um, you know a position as a king was that of Hamlet himself but this has not happened and uh, this is cause for concern um, for the people who are very very close to Prince Hamlet. Hamlet? Thrift, thrift Horatio, the funeral baked meats did coldly furnish forth the marriage tables. Would I had met my dearest foe in heaven? Or ever I had seen that day, Horatio, my father, methinks I see my father. So you see, very um, sarcastically said that the celebration, the meat which was distributed on the funeral, which was baked for the funeral, was taken to the tables of uh, marriage ceremony. So the time has not been wasted. And uh, I think that this is the uh, uh, flaw. Uh, this is a mistake that Claudius and Gertrude have committed. That they have uh, very, very quickly taken on to uh, the uh, the marriage which uh, they should they could have waited for some time but uh, they were too hasty in their decision and that has uh, made everybody around them confused uh, has made everybody question them that why have they done such a deed my father me think I see my father he says I feel that I am able to see my father. Horatio, where my lord? Now Horatio thinks that Hamlet has already seen the ghost of um, uh, King uh, Hamlet, but uh, that is not the case. He says that I see him because, because he is with him. The father is with the son. So um, Hamlet, in my mind's eye, Horatio. So here, he says that I cannot um, take my eyes off my father. His face is there in my memory, in my mind's eye. Horatio, I saw him once. He was a goodly king. Hamlet, he was a man. Take him for all in all. Hamlet now says, he was a man. So uh, the definition of a man, uh, strength of character, uh, goodness in nature, uh, friendliness, sincerity with his uh, wife and uh, fidelity, all these things uh, make a man, define a man. So Hamlet rightly says that my father was a man of his words, a man of his deeds, a man of, uh, you know, courage and uh, fortitude. I shall not look upon his like again. He says that there is not going to be any other man like my father. So this is very, very important. Horatio. My lord, I think I saw him yesternight. Now Horatio becomes, Horatio becomes um, a little uh, confident and he says that um, I guess I saw him last night. Saw who? Hamlet says. Horatio, my lord, the king, your father. So here, Horatio confides in uh, Hamlet that he has seen 
his ghost, his father's ghost, and um, he says that, uh, you know, um, your father was there. Hamlet, the king, my father. So Hamlet still calls him the king, okay? Because in his mind's eye, there was just one king ever, and that was King Hamlet, his own father. Horatio, season your admiration for a while with an attent ear till I may deliver upon the witness of these gentlemen this marvel to you. He says that it is uh, something very, very amazing that has happened and um, I have seen this apparition. Hamlet. For God's love, let me hear. He says that, okay, let me hear him because uh, I should be uh, there and um, I should be able to see him because he's so much craving for him and he's so much, you know, concerned for him that he says that I must see him. Horatio, two nights together had these gentlemen Marcellus and Bernardo on their watch in the dead vast and middle of the night. So you remember that it was one o'clock. Being thus encountered a figure like your father, armed at point exactly capip. So he says that he was armed, he was in his armor, and we saw a figure like your father's. Appears before them and with solemn march goes slow and stately by them. Thrice he walked by their oppressed and fear surprised eyes. He says that not once but three times I saw we saw him go across us, go past us within his truncheon's length whilst they distilled almost to jelly with the act of fear. So you uh, become a little fearful if you see a ghost, if you see an apparition and uh, because it is not uh, a normal thing to happen, it is not something which is common. So any uncommon happening, any uncommon doing would uh, make us, uh, you know, surprised. So uh, that is what happened and these men became like jelly. Uh, their legs were not steady, they were shaky. Stand dumb and speak not to him. This to me in dreadful secrecy impart they did. And I with them the third night kept the watch, whereas they had delivered both in time. Form of the thing, each word made true and good. The apparition comes, I knew your father. These hands are not more like. So he says that I am very, very sure that it was your father because as much as I know my own hands, that much I know that I saw very, very clearly that your father had appeared the night. Hamlet, but where was this? He says that where was this? Where was this happening? Marcellus, my lord, upon the platform where we watched. So he says that on the platform where we keep our guard for the palace, uh, there we were standing and there we saw the uh, King Hamlet's ghost. Hamlet, did you not speak to it? Horatio, my lord, I did, but answer made it none. Yet once me thought, it lifted up its head and did address itself to motion, like as it would speak. But even then the morning cock crew loud, and at the sound it shrunk in haste away and vanished from our sight. He says that I did try to talk to the ghost, and it appeared that it would speak to me. But uh, the, at the same time the cock crew, and um, 
you know, I, uh, it was dawn coming up and the ghost quickly vanished. So, of course, these ghosts will come in the night and they would disappear immediately before even it is dawn. Hamlet, it is very strange. He says that it is very strange to um, have some, this kind of, a, of an information here. Horatio, as I do live, my honored lot is true, and we did think it writ down in our duty to let you know of it. He, Horatio says that it was my duty to let you know that uh, your father's ghost has been seen by us. Hamlet, indeed, indeed, sirs, but this troubles me. Hold you the watch tonight. He says that, okay, it troubles me also. And can, you, can we do the same tonight? Can we have the watch again tonight? And see whether we are able to see the ghost of uh, King Hamlet or not. Marcellus and Bernardo, we do, my lord, Hamlet. Armed, say you? Marcellus, armed, my lord. He says that the ghost was armed in full armor. Hamlet from top to toe. Marcellus Bernardo, my lord, from head to foot. So it was ready for uh, some kind of a battle. And the ghost was in an armor, not as a, you know, white cloaked um, individual. Hamlet. Then saw you not his face, Horatio? Yes, my lord, he wore his beaver up. So he says that, yes, we saw his face. Hamlet, what looked he frowningly, Horatio? A countenance more in sorrow than in anger. Here, he says that he was not very angry but he was very sorrowful, very upset. So his whole being portrayed not anger, but depression. And he was very, very unhappy. Hamlet, pale or red? Pale or red meaning, was he um, flushed in the cheek or he was very pale? Pale meaning he was upset and unwell. And red would mean that he was doing well in his uh, health. Horatio, nay, very pale. He says that no, he was very, very pale. Hamlet, and fixed his eyes upon you, Horatio says, most constantly. He says that he constantly looked at me and he fixed his eyes on me. Hamlet, I would, I had been there. So this is what his wish is, to be there uh, for his father and uh, to be able to see him yet again. Horatio, it would have much amazed you. He says that you would have been very, very surprised and amazed to see your father in a dress in his armor and in a very, very pitiful condition. Hamlet. Very like, very like, stayed it long. Horatio. While one with moderate haste might tell a hundred. So he says that, you know, I am so amazed at what I saw that day. Marcellus and Bernardo, longer, longer, Horatio, not when I saw it, Hamlet. His beard was grizzled, no. Horatio, it was as I have seen it in his life, a sable silvered. So a portrayal of uh, King Hamlet, that he was a very sober, very serious individual, with a silvering beard uh, showing uh, his uh, age and his maturity of thought and maturity of countenance. And here again, 
we will uh, be able to compare it with uh, King Lear's appearance who had a silver beard, who was old and uh, his countenance was that of uh, a very uh, mature uh, father, a very concerned father. But later on we discovered that King Lear had his flaws as well. So uh, the um, comparison of beards over here. Hamlet. Now Hamlet decides that I will watch tonight. Perchance it will walk again. He says that I will come with you. Maybe it walks again. Horatio. I warrant it will. So Horatio says that I am sure that it will walk. If it assume my noble father's person, I'll speak to it, though hell itself should gape, and bid me hold my peace. I pray you all, if you have hitherto concealed this sight, let it be tenable in your silence still, and whatever else shall hap tonight, give it an understanding but no tongue. Okay? So it says that I request all of you, Whatever happens tonight, uh, see it, observe it, but do not speak about it. I will requite your loves, so fare you well. Upon the platform, twixt 11 and 12, I'll visit you. He says that I will come to the same platform late in night and I will visit you. All our duty to your honor. So they are all very much uh, with uh, King, uh, with Prince Hamlet's, um, you know, um, decision. And uh, they are they're all going to be there. Hamlet, your loves as mine to you, farewell. So he says that goodbye and see you in the night. Exit all but Hamlet. My father's spirit in arms, all's not well. I doubt some foul play, would the night were come. Till then sit still my soul, foul deeds will rise, though all the earth's overwhelming them to men's eyes. Very powerful dialogues, a speech. He talks to himself that if my father's spirit is there in arms, it means that he has not gone uh, to the heavens. So uh, he is there and it means that all is not well. Things are not going in the right direction. He says that I doubt some foul play. Would the night were come? He says that there is some foul play. There is something which is wrong and uh, I should be able to uh, see through it. I should be able to know. I will probe into the situation and I will understand why my father's ghost is armed and is lurking about the palace. Foul deeds will rise. He says that very truly said that here Foul deeds will rise. It means that, uh, you know, uh, bad deeds are going to be uh, surfaced because one day or the other the victory will be of truth. And this is what he keeps on saying that um, bad deeds are going to uh, come, are going to surface themselves and um, the victory will be of truth. Exits. Scene 3, a room in Polonius's house. Uh, I told you earlier that Polonius, Laertes and Ophelia are three important characters. Ophelia is the one whom um, 
Prince Hamlet loves and cares for and um, Polonius is a very old um, friend of a friend and confidant of King Hamlet and he always advises Prince Hamlet as well. <coughs> so uh, here we see Laertes. My necessities are embarked farewell. So we saw earlier that Laertes wanted to go away and he was given permission by the king and by his father Polonius. And sister, as the winds give benefit and convoy is assistant, do not sleep but let me hear from you. So it's very close to his sister and he says that uh, do not sleep, keep me informed about what is going on back at home. Ophelia, do you doubt that? She says that are you doubting it in one some way? that you are also concerned that things are not right. Laertes, for Hamlet and the trifles of his favor, hold it a fashion and a toy in blood, a violet in the youth of primy nature, forward not permanent, sweet not lasting, the perfume and suppliance of a minute no more. He says that Hamlet uh, could change, his love for you can change and uh, you know he can be concerned with a lot of other things and he may not give you uh, the kind of attention you are seeking or you deserve. So uh, be very very careful that maybe his love will not be long lasting. So Laertes is concerned about Ophelia um, being heartbroken at the end. Ophelia, no more but so. Laertes, think it no more. For nature, crescent does not grow alone. In tews and bulk, but as this temple wax, the inward service of the mind and soul grows white withal. Perhaps he loves you now. And now no soil nor cottle doth besmirch a virtue of his will, but you must fear. His greatness weighed, his will is not his own, for he himself is subject to his birth. He says that he may love you now, but things might change later on, because he is a prince and his duty is uh, far more greater than uh, what you think of. He may not, as valued persons do, carve for himself, for on his choice depends the safety and health of this whole state. He says that actually uh, the duty is for his own state and and therefore must his choice be circumscribed unto the voice and yielding of that body whereof he is the head. He says that you know Hamlet's duties have changed now and he may not give you the same attention that he used to give you earlier and he may uh, you know have more uh, bigger concerns than uh, than only you know um, being your uh, lover. So he has to care for his uh, state, he has to care for the people around him and he may start ignoring you. Then if he says he loves you, it fits your wisdom so far to believe it. As he in his particular act and place may give his saying deed, which is no further than the main voice of Denmark goes with all. He says that again his duty lies with Denmark. Then weigh what loss your honor may sustain, if with two crescent ear you list his songs, or lose your heart, or your chaste treasure upon open to his unmastered importunity. He says that you may 
uh, feel dejected and uh, he is not in the right frame of mind right now so uh, he may say things to you which may hurt you and be careful of him fear it ophelia fear it my dear sister and keep you in the rear of your affection out of the shot and danger of desire so here he is you know like a very good brother he is advising his sister uh, to uh, stay away from um, hamlet because he is not in the right frame of mind he might do something which later on he may regret and uh, do not uh, give in to your desire and your love for him but hold yourself and watch and see how things uh, go about the cherished maid is prodigal enough if she unmask her beauty to the moon virtue itself escapes not clamorous strokes the canker galls the infants of the spring too oft before their buttons be disclosed and in the morn and liquid dew of youth contagious blossoms are most imminent be wary then best safety lies in fear youth to itself rebel though none else near so he says that uh, hold on to your youth hold on to your desires don't let them go out don't uh, you have to confine yourself you have to limit yourself and you have to be very very careful in your life so a very um, you know um pure and true advice of a brother to his sister that uh, she should not give in to desire because then uh, things might go wrong and she may regret any of her actions which she may feel can be committed now so uh, be very thoughtful about how you go uh, go in uh, contact with prince hamlet ophelia i shall the effect of this good lesson keep she is like a good sister uh, taking the advice of her brother as watchman to my heart but good my brother do not at some ungracious pastors do show me the steep and thorny way to heaven whilst like a puffed and reckless libertine himself the primrose path of dalian streets and wrecks not his own reed so he says that i have she says that um your advice is well taken and i will respect it but you should also be careful in your life and when you're going um god be with you so that you are able to take good proper decisions so uh, do not make decisions in haste both the brother and sister are now advising each other they are caring for each other uh, the love and affection of a brother and sister are very clear and very nicely depicted over here let us o fear me not I stay too long but here my father comes he says that don't be afraid of um, for me i will take care of myself enters polonius their father a double blessing is a double grace occasion smiles upon a second leave lord polonius yet here laetis abroad abroad for shame the wind sits in the shoulder of your sail and you are stayed for there my blessing with thee and these few percepts in thy memory see thou character give thy tongues thoughts no tongue nor any unproportioned thought his act 
So here again Polonius is advising his son that be careful, tread very carefully on these grounds and do not give a tongue to your thoughts. It means that do not speak before the right time or before uh, what you think is uh, right. So here again everybody is uh, you know um, being very careful of what is to be said. Why? Because there are uh, you know um, uh, King Claudius's spies everywhere. They are around. Because they have done something wrong, they are extra careful in what people are talking about. So people could be, uh, you know, spying on other people for uh, speaking um, on certain situations or voicing their thoughts. So all these things are uh, very much uh, in their concern. And Polonius, as an older person, as a person who has a lot of experience and who has been very close to King Hamlet, knows that there are people uh, who are uh, treacherous, who can go and poison uh, King Claudius's mind. Uh, so we should all be very, very careful and very quiet and should not voice our thought um, so um, you know, uh, so clearly. Be thou familiar, but by no means vulgar. Those friends thou hast and their adoption tried, grapple them to thy soul with hoops of steel, but do not dull thy palm with entertainment. So he says that, be very careful of your friends also, people who are around you. And it's a good advice of a father uh, to his son. But do not dull thy palm with entertainment. So you know you should be not be so happy-go-lucky that you uh, forget your duties and uh, forget what you uh, need to do and you are unable to hold your sword. So do not give in to so much of entertainment. Of each new hatched unfledged comrade Beware of entrance to a quarrel, but being in, bear it that the opposite may, may beware of thee. Give every man thy ear, but few thy voice. Again, good advice. This is what he is saying over here, that you can give, you can listen to everybody, but do not give uh, advice to everyone and do not open up your mouth uh, so much that your wordings could be caught. Take each man's censure, but reserve thy judgment. <coughs> Take each man's censure, but reserve thy judgment. So this is what he is saying over here, that um, your judgments should be very, very uh, thoughtful. You should uh, see an individual, um, care for an individual, but uh, you must uh, judge him after a lot of consideration. So um, very good advice. Costly thy habit, as thy purse can buy, but not expressed in fancy, rich nor gaudy, for the apparel oft proclaims the man, and they in France of the best rank and station, are of a most select and generous chief in that. He says that uh, you are an honorable person, you wear honorable clothes, so you should be able to honor and guide and govern yourself properly. Are of a most select and generous chief in that, he says that people in France are very selective about their friends. So you have to be very, very careful. Neither a borrower nor a lender be. Here.
very um, effective lines that you should not be a borrower and you should not be a lender even. There is a lot of wisdom in these words that when we start uh, lending uh, things to people uh, then we uh, and when they are not returned we are heartbroken, we are upset, we are unhappy and um, we should not be borrowers also so that we uh, you know we should learn to uh, live within our means uh, learn within uh, as much as our pocket uh, you know um, uh, allows us to spend so this is a very very genuine uh, advice to for all times to come I must say because uh, you know um, if you are living according to your uh, earnings then you are never poor and um, you should not uh, you know um, beg in front of anyone for money or for help and uh, then also that and uh, again you should not be such a big lender that you keep on giving away your money to people and it may be returned and it may not be returned one day so you will be a loser uh, in both the senses so do not borrow things from people and do not lend things to others for loan oft loses both itself and friend you see again aapki jo friendship hai wo kharab ho jati hai agar aap kisi ke karzdar ban jate hain so this is what uh, the advice is here and very rightly uh, given and very justly proven. So um, and borrowing dulls the edge of husbandry. So he says that uh, you are not a very very um, proper person if you borrow things from people. Uh, unki nazar mein aap weak individual ban jate hain jab aap kisi ke aage haath phailaye aur uh, madad mange monetary help mange so uh, asking for monetary help is not good and even giving monetary help is not good because then that person that friend may not return the money aur phir aapke dil mein uske liye ek uh, uh, buri jagah paida ho jayegi so uh, don't uh, do that and this is what the father is advising the son this above all to thine own self be true and it must follow as the night the day thou canst not then be false to any man farewell my blessing season this in thee so here we realize uh, the kind of a character uh, polonius has he has no doubt been a very very good advisor to King Hamlet he has been a good um, uh, caretaker of Prince Hamlet so we see him as a good natured a very seasoned a very mature individual who is full of good advices for his son and uh, for his daughter and um, we are sure that King Hamlet would have taken good as advices from him also. Ladies, most humbly do I take my leave, my Lord. Lord Polonius, the time invites you, go, your servants tend. Ladies, farewell, Ophelia, and remember well what I have said to you. So again he reminds Ophelia of his wordings. Ophelia is in my memory locked and you yourself shall keep the key of it. She says that it is I have taken your advice completely and I have locked it in my memory and it is going to stay there and the key to my memory will be with you because uh, it will be most safe with you and uh, your wordings will keep on uh, ringing in my ears for quite a long time. Ladies, farewell, exit. 
thought Polonius. What is it, Ophelia, be hath said to you? Now, Lord Polonius says that, uh, Ophelia, what did Laertes advise you about? Ophelia, so please you, something touching the Lord Hamlet. She says, she's very true, she's a very uh, sincere individual, and she says that he has advised me uh, against uh, Prince Hamlet that I should be very, very careful with him because he has other things in his mind and he has now uh, to, he should be taking care of the state now. So he's not as happy-go-lucky now as he was earlier. So his affiliation, his love for me might also change. So this is what he told me about Hamlet. So Lord Polonius says, marry, well be thought. He says that good advice and he thought of, um, you know, um, showing that your brother is um, genuinely concerned and loving towards you. Tis told me he hath very oft of late given private time to you and you yourself have of your audience been most free and bounteous. If it be so, as so tis put on me and that in way of caution, I must tell you, you do not understand yourself so clearly as it behoves my daughter and your honor. What is between you? Give me up the truth. Uh, Lord Polonius is concerned about his daughter now and he says that, you know, you are youthful and you are uh, uh, very um, tender in age and people may take undue advantage of your innocence, which I do not want. And uh, so you have to take care of your honor, be honorable. So you see over here, um, ethical values is, are being touched upon by uh, Shakespeare. And um, we come to think that uh, things are probably uh, not that ethical in the courtrooms as they should have been. And they were uh, once again the concern of Shakespeare. He lifts his fingers on the um, problems which are there in the society, in the social setup. And I must say very bold of him to uh, uh, talk about these uh, subjects, these topics, and to give the good advice to young people, younger generation and, um, you know, uh, young ladies to take care of their honor and not to give in to um, frivolities. So here this is what he is saying and he says that I want to, I've seen you around with uh, Prince Hamlet. Uh, of course he's the father and he would be concerned about his daughter. So he says that I've seen you around uh, talking to him and I want to know the truth of your uh, relationship with him. Ophelia, very honestly, very innocently, uh, she's one of the sweetest, uh, most sweetest, you know, character of uh, Shakespeare and very close to Cordelia uh, because Cordelia was also very fair, very truthful, and very honest in all her doings. So here we see uh, Ophelia in the same lines. Ophelia, he hath my lord of late made many tenders of his affection to me. So she says that he has uh, shown his affection towards me. Lord Polonius, affection you speak like a green girl. 
unshifted in such perilous circumstance do you believe his standards as you call them he says that um, you are being very very silly uh, because uh, in these circumstances I don't think that he would have time to be affectionate towards you he is so much aggrieved and he is so much full of sorrow and depression uh, how can he give you uh, the attention Ophelia shows her uh, confusion I do not know my lord what I should think she says that um, I'm not uh, sure and I don't know what I should think so there is also the element of confusion between the two people and um, they are uh, very much uh, um, on talking terms with each other uh, the affection is known by has been observed by the father and by the brother also and um, Ophelia very honestly uh, is uh, saying that um, I am confused I do not know uh, what to do Lord Polonius Mary I'll teach you think yourself a baby that you have turned these standards for true pay which are not sterling tender yourself more dearly or not to crack the wind of the poor phrase running it thus you will tender me a fool so this is what he says that be very very careful and my advice is that uh, you should uh, tell me everything whatever is going on my lord my lord he hath importuned me with love in honorable fashion so Ophelia she says that uh, he's not um, making any kind of uh, uh, wrong advances and he is uh, being very very honorable towards me as uh, you know befitting a prince uh, not to take undue advantage of uh, uh, the innocence of a beautiful girl so he is uh, uh, Prince Hamlet is uh, giving all the respect to Ophelia and that is how we like his character more because he is not he's a man of his words he's a man of honor and he is a man of dignity so the same things that he saw in his father uh, King Hamlet Hamlet himself possesses all these virtues Lord Polonius I fashion you may call it go to go to Ophelia and hath given countenance to his speech my lord with almost all the holy vows of heaven so he says that um, whatever he said he um, put a mark of uh, decency properness on it and the uh, holiness of uh, heavens he sweared upon the holiness of heavens again a long speech by uh, Lord Polonius advising his daughter I springs to catch woodcocks I do know when the blood burns how prodigal the soul lends the tongue vows these blazes daughter give more light than heat extinct in both even in their promise as it is a making you must not take for fire he says that you know in the heat of the youth you say a lot of things but uh, perhaps you don't mean them so he is being concerned uh, about his uh, daughter and rightly so every father is concerned about uh, the 
uh, sincerity of uh, uh, the person who is advancing uh, his daughter. So uh, he is doubting uh, uh, Hamlet and uh, not wrongly because they are both young and very uh, fiery, very vibrant and their emotions are running high at that moment and they should be given advice to uh, cool down, uh, think very sensibly and then go forward. For this time, be somewhat scanter of your maiden presence. Set your entreatments at a higher rate than a command to parley. For Lord Hamlet, believe so much in him that he is young and with the larger tether may he walk, then may be given you in few Ophelia. Says that he is young and he is of a bigger disposition. <coughs> Ophelia, do not believe his vows, for they are brokers. Not of that die which their investments show, but mere implorators of unholy suits, breathing like scantified and pious pot, the better to beguile. This is for all. I would not in plain terms from this time forth have you so slender any moment leisure as to give words or talk with the Lord Hamlet? Look to it, I charge you, come your ways. He's again, you know, advising her that, you know, um, his vows may not be true and so you have to be very, very careful. I shall obey my Lord. Ophelia says, I shall obey my lord. Exeunt. Scene 4, the platform. So um, here we end our lecture number 17. See you inshallah in the next lecture. Take care. Allah Hafiz.